It's not just a big sign at the front saying how many years they've been in business, but a decoration. Oh no! I mean, I'm not even the fancy one that lights up at night. No, 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 no. They've got a, they've got a bar. Admittedly, it doesn't actually sell booze. They haven't got a license, but it's a bar. They've got a, a bike repair and hire shop. They've got signposts to useful things about the place, like the, the massage parlour, which is itself a facility. They have a fully appointed lake, complete with a rather artificial-looking monster. There's the sand pit. Where would we be without that? Uh, where would the local cats be? There's a, uh, a school building there used as a dormitory, and these are some of the temporary dance floors that spring up during the camp, housed under big marquees. In 1999, there were two of them. Now there are six. Uh, there's the uh, sauna house there in the standard Swedish red. And reception, 24-hour manned reception, decorated on the inside with some rather nice murals. They've got a notice board, they've got, they got pens, they've got their own sellotape. All right, that's not tremendously impressive. Uh, they've got disco ball! Uh, oh, there's the uh, DJ booth there for one of the dance floors. They've got the yeah, notice board, yeah, newsletter, banana phone, disco ball! And a suggestion box, proper one with an ear on it. And fire hoses have sprung up in recent years. There's the internet cafe. Perhaps I should have got us a shot of the inside of that. Lindy Hop shop, you've seen that before. Oh, prop shop. Here we are in the extraordinarily well-appointed prop shop. And you can see the people here beavering away using the machines. We have sewing machines and ironing boards and all sorts. And uh, we're very unlikely to run out of cushions, I think, in the near future. And here we have one of the organisers of the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Hello? Uh, all Hello. the way from Stockholm. Which, you know, not terribly exotic here. But by world standards, Stockholm is exotic enough. And, uh, oh, I see a lady here who's uh, trying to pick out something for a, for a costume. I wonder what she's, she's going to be. A rabbit. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, I see. that might need a bit of conversion. Oh, stick a couple of ears on it, paint it white, you're sorted. All right, so uh, people are allowed to help themselves to uh, the bits of cloth and, well, pretty much anything that's in here, really. Um, it's uh, fairly random, but it's pretty good for parties and all sorts of skits that happen in the evening uh, meetings, for instance, and masks and hats and just weird stuff that they've collected over the years. It's not always the tidiest place but that's part of what makes it so much fun. We have the rack of clothes and a polite notice. Another of the camp facilities is the resident local grumpy man who walks his dog about the place and tells people that they're not allowed to do things. You can't pitch your tent there. Ah, this is the no-no box, so-called, because no, no, you can't have stuff from it unless you're on the official list, and even then you've got to cross off every little thing diligently. They have a large supply of wood to make things out of, and the elite team, gathered from around the world, uh, uses its craft skills. I think you just look at this soaring technique here. Just look at this soaring technique here, marvellous. But on the phone, disco ball, death slide! And of course, the free table football, so that the crowd of international experts can show off their consummate skills. Oh. This is a picnic table for people who want plates on the table but never cups. And this is for practicing chin ups and bashing your head. That slide!